So, before I even get started, this is for my Snapchat followers. I posted this conversation on my Snapchat and they like loved it. I got like a hundred messages that night and y'all were like, dang, I want to share it and you don't, you won't let us screen record it, yada, yada, yada. So this is for y'all. Snapchat told me to bring my talents on the YouTube as far as talking. So this is for y'all. I'm going to go ahead and do this here. So real quick disclaimer. For those of y'all who are new to my channel, first of all, go ahead and subscribe. Welcome. I do hair stuff. I do a little bit of fashion. I'm trying to get into makeup. Welcome to my channel. Come on. Ride with me. But for those of y'all who are new to my channel or don't follow me on like Instagram and watch my stories or don't follow me on Snapchat, I really do my part in supporting black businesses. The vast majority of the companies I work with are black owned. The vast majority of the companies that I post are black owned. I use like black owned toilet paper. Yes, I found a black owned toilet paper company and I will have them linked in the description box. I use black owned makeup. Uh, that's the crayon case in Juvia's Place, Fenty Beauty. Uh, what else do I do? I have black owned deodorant. I used to have black owned toothpaste. I mean, I really do my part as far as trying to support black-owned businesses. I even have black-owned laundry detergent, y'all. Like, I really do my part in trying to support black-owned businesses. So when I'm saying this, I'm coming from a place, I'm really talking from the perspective as a consumer at this point. So, there is a post going around saying that natural hair care companies are under attack by white brands who are trying to capitalize off naturals and they're basically pushing these black brands off the shelf. And I saw it and I was like, what? Like, we just going to disregard the main choice? Myel Organics, Curls, Jane Carter, who else? Uh, Eden Body Works. We just gonna disregard the fact that there was only like two or three black owned hair products on the shelves. Literally when I get went natural, what was black owned in Target and Sally's was Shea Moisture's, Car Shea Moisture's, come on, I always do stuff like that. Shea Moisture, Carol's Daughter, and I think it's called Mrs. Jessie or Miss Jessie J's or something like that. Those are literally the only three products. And then those didn't even work for my hair. They used to leave my hair so stripped and dry. Then on the other hand, there was, Cream of Nature was out at that point with their Argonne Oil stuff. Who else? Cantu was out. Tresemme Naturals was out. This was before all of these companies that I'm about to list in a minute came out. Um, As I Am was out. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. Um, what's that company? It was like Moroccan My Shine or something was out. Uh, I can't remember who it was. Herbal Essence had curly hair products. Um, Organics had curly hair products. ORS had curly hair products. These are all white companies. There were only literally two or three black companies when I started transitioning some years back. That's not that's really not even that long ago. That was like what? Six years six, seven years? Not that long ago. That's all we had. Fast forward today, we literally have the main choice, Myel Organics, Eden Body Works, Shea Moisture. Yes, Shea Moisture is still black on, contrary to what people Say, if you go look up the owner of Shea Moisture, that man still owns his company. I don't know why. Well, I do know why. Because every time, a, I'm not even going that tangent. But every time black people start getting ahead, people got to like plant seeds of doubt and disseminate false information and misleading information in order to tear us down. But that man still owns his company and I can do a whole nother video on that for another day. But yes, we have Shea Moisture. We have The Do, Camille Rose, um, Jane Carter. Uh, Aunt Jackie, Uncle Funkies, Sultanicals, TGIN, I can't remember if I said curls or not, but curls, um, The Do, what's that, that's 14 that I'm at now that are in stores. This is strictly in stores. This is not even talking about all the companies that are on the internet doing their thing. This is strictly in stores. I'm going to stop at 14. That's literally a dozen, over a dozen natural hair products that I can just think of off the top of my head. I know there's, matter of fact, Naturalicious is one. There's, there's so many black-owned hair companies in the store now. So to say that black-owned companies are being pushed off the shelves when in, these, for in my natural hair journey, we've gone from having just two or three products to over a dozen. And we went from having literally three 
three fractions of a shelf to a whole aisle of com of products to me that's like disrespectful to just disregard all these companies we have million dollar natural hair companies that are black owned now and i get i get where the narrative comes from the narrative comes from the fact that black women spend the most on beauty products period hair makeup lotion soap whatever black women spend the most yet in the past we didn't own any of these products so we're giving them millions on millions hundreds of millions of dollars but we didn't even have products but to say that they're being pushed off the shelves and they are under attack just because some black hair companies are struggling is is ridiculous to me we're, what we're not gonna do is disregard how how far we've come just because some people are struggling because they're not marketing their product they're refusing to invest in their products or they don't know how to market or they don't know how to invest or simply because people don't like their products there are some companies out that are posting this and i'm like people don't like your products if you go look at your reviews on youtube people don't like your products so of course you're not gonna be selling like what so in my opinion there's a there was a lot in that article i didn't read the whole thing but i skimmed it there was a lot in that article and in my opinion it was like it was like all excuses like white companies are not pushing you off of shelves they're not they're not pushing you like if you look at the facts we're not getting pushed off shelves we're taking over the aisle we're literally taking over the aisle. We went from two or three black owned hair companies to over a dozen. And if you go into Target and Sally's and look, and you just count how many black versus white companies. There are going to be more black hair, com black natural hair companies than there are white. And it, we, what? I just, that whole thing just, just kind of threw me off. And then another part to it was that, that um, white companies are now trying to capitalize on naturals. No, they've been doing this. Literally, they had the first curly hair products. Tresemme, Cantu, Carima Nature, As I Am, and who else? L'Oreal. They had curly hair products before we were even like the natural hair community. Those products were already out. We were all using Cantu. We were all using Carima Nature because that's all we had. Those are white-owned companies. And As I Am, that's a white-owned company. Or I don't think, think, I don't think the person who owns, let me not say white because I'm just saying non-black because I think the person who owns, um... As I am, it's like Indian or something. He's, he's not white. So uh, don't, I take that back. I'm going to say non-black. But those, comp those non-black companies have been making curly hair products. So they're not just all of a sudden seeing naturals and being like, oh my God, we got to get in on this. They've been in on this. Revlon has been in on this. L'Oreal has been in on this. Procter & Gamble has been in on this. We're seeing these new products by these companies but at the end of the day those three companies they own Cantu, Cream and Nature, Head and Shoulders. Those companies own those companies and they've been giving us curly hair products but just like our black brands are doing they're coming out with more collections and I, I wholeheartedly get the concern because I really do feel like it's extremely problematic that black women spend the most on natural hair products or just on beauty products in general but we're not at the top of the food chain when it comes to people collecting but i feel like we need to acknowledge the fact we got a seat at the table the main choice is like a million dollar company myel all these companies are making so much money and they're black owned so let's we can't just sit here and disregard how far we've come it kind of sets us back when we don't acknowledge how far we come we just focus on the struggle and take a victim mentality because that's kind of what it is so do i think that black hair companies are under attack absolutely not do i think that non-black companies continue to capitalize off us absolutely yes yes they do but i don't think that we're under attack and i'm not gonna claim that victim role we are on the rise black hair companies have com black businesses in general have have come so far especially black women Forbes has released an article and it's been going for a few years running black women have been leading in entrepreneurship we're not gonna disregard that that's what we just not gonna do that and another statement that I found problematic is saying they were saying that like they're these white companies or non-black companies are buying influencers out they're paying them these what they say excessive or exuberant rates and they're taking them on vacation so they won't work with black and that's not and now I'm speaking from an influencer perspective. That's not happening. Y'all, the only two companies I've known in the past like year or so to take their influencers on a vacation were black owned and they took their black influencers on empowerment retreats. And one of them, they went through and they went to schools and were like tutoring or mentoring children. So I'm not sure what 
that was that was kind of like distorted truth and those companies were carol's daughter and curls they are owned by women of color and they took their women of color influencers on trips like there's nothing wrong with that so there that that notion that they're uh buying us out is completely false as far as paying us excessive exuberant amounts i feel like they're paying us what we're owed people fail to realize that thanks to influencers and youtube companies no longer have to have full-blown ad campaigns or pay for commercials that means they don't have to pay a videographer a photographer a hairstylist a model a makeup artist a lighting person someone to set up the stuff someone to buy the props a producer a director a writer an editor a venue space what else do you need uh they don't have to buy equipment they just that's 13 people i've just eliminated that they would have to compensate because you're paying one person to produce a full blown commercial for your products and to educate people on your products not only that influencer is so much better because now nah, i know some of us some of us are you know people lie people lie but a lot of us and the ones that are really popular and people gravitate to they're genuine so you're getting this full production where you don't have to hire all these people you just pay one person to give a real honest opinion to real honest followers who are actually looking and in the market for your following and then not only that they don't even have to pay for the ad space to run a commercial you have to pay the cable and the tv provider to get in that ad space to be in a magazine you have to pay the magazine to be in that ad space you're literally talking you're literally complaining about compensating one person who is supporting your business and bringing you funds you are mad or offering them pennies or telling them to do this in exchange for products and they're making they're generating income for you i mean like come on now like what and it's it's not about it's not about the influencers are selling out or being bought it's about them being treated like they're supposed to because like i said the vast majority of companies that i work with or that i post are black owned and they treat me like they're supposed to be treated i i now i do post things that i want to post because i do find products that i like for example i've posted sultanical several times and they have never given me a dime and that's because i genuinely like their product there's nothing wrong with that but i find it problematic when a company comes to me and asks me to give them the sun the stars and the moons but all they're trying to give me is pennies in exchange um, you, you're asking me to support your living, but you won't even offer me anything in exchange but products and pennies? Like, come on now. That's a, that's disrespectful to me, especially when you just completely cut out a dozen people you don't have to pay in order to get your business out there. And that's not unreasonable. Like, people want to get paid for the job that they're doing. Like, when you go to work every day, don't you want to get paid when your boss says, oh, can you do a little extra for nothing? No, you say, no, I need my overtime. I need my overtime check. You're not just going to be like, okay, I'll do it. That's just, that's just how it is and I feel like it's ethical and it's moral to support people who are supporting your business and I feel like that's a big disconnect and that's what separates these companies like Myel Organics and the Main Choice and Curls who are in the stores they're flourishing not only that they're, they just started off with just one collection. Now the main choice has too many collections for me to count. Myel is having numerous collections. Curls has numerous collections. TGIN has multiple collections. So they went from that one little section to now they're on multiple shelves. I feel like what separates those companies from the ones who are reposting and saying that we're under attack and we're struggling because these non-black companies are taking over, I feel like that is an excuse. And what separates my, the Myels from the small companies who aren't making it is really it boils down to investing investing in your marketing investing in your branding which is not the same thing as marketing your branding is basically like your appearance of your products and investing in your customer most importantly investing in your customer these same companies are not going to hair expos they're not going and doing pop-up shops if they can't afford hair expos they're not running contests on their page i mean there's things and you can say the excuses well we don't have the budget there are cheap and free things that you can do in order to connect with your customer and that's that's the that's the biggest thing and that's what it is about these natural hair products y'all we don't need all these products we buy these products because we want to support what we're seeing everybody loves the main choice because we support how empowering they are and what they symbolize to us and they got bomb products we want to support myel for the same reason we want to support curls for the same reason it's basically we're supporting the movement that's why we're buying all these products we don't need a hundred gels we don't even need five gels. I got five gels. I'm going to get the same wash and go. 
I mean, <laughs> we don't need all of these products. We're choosing to support them because we're aware that these white companies or non-black companies are making a profit off of us and we want our black companies to do the same. So we don't mind shelling out money and buying the same thing over and over to support a black business. And the ones that we're supporting are the ones that are really investing into their customers and investing into their communities. You also have these same companies who have like outreach programs. You have the owner of... Um, Curls, she was doing something on OWN where she was empowering women. Then you have Courtney with The Main Choice where she's doing the Who's the Boss convention. And then you have um, Mayel, she also has something where she does empowerment with girls. These other companies are not doing the same. And that really resonates with people who are buying the same thing over and over again. It costs no money to connect with your customer. And that's, that's really important. And I feel like that's really what separates these companies who are really taking off in stores versus these companies who are not even getting in stores. Like it, to me, it's just way too many black companies in stores right now booming for this to be circulating around and for people to just kind of be disregarding how far we've come just because some of their companies that they do like or some smaller companies are struggling. And I'm always the type of person and that's, that's me. I know everybody handles struggle differently when I'm struggling like for example when I was struggling with my engagement on Instagram when the algorithm hit me yeah it was sad but instead of getting on Instagram saying oh woe well, is me Instagram is suppressing me oh this that and the third you know what I did I took some time off and I was thinking what can I do to increase my engagement what can I do to what can I do basically so when I came back I started doing different kinds of hairstyles I've started doing protective styles I started incorporating more wigs now I'm getting into fashion you, you just gotta revamp you can't just keep you know what the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and thinking that you're gonna get the same result if you're what you're doing right now has you stagnant you need to try something new and if that means that you need to hire somebody because marketing is not your forte you could be making the best product in the world and marketing it is just not your forte if you need to sacrifice and find a budget or hire an intern or do something, take out a loan, do what you got to do to make your business. If that's your passion, that's your goal, you're going to do what you can to get your business where you want it at any cost. That's with anything in life. If something is your goal and you are determined to get it, you're going to do whatever you have to do to get it done. And some people are just not that good at marketing. And I just feel like this, this whole post saying that black companies are under attack right now and we're getting pushed off the shelves it's just kind of misleading it's kind of using it's kind of using and abusing oppression and struggle to kind of get ahead and make an excuse as to why you're not doing what you need to do to take your brand to the next level because these companies that I'm seeing posted are not at hair events. They're not having pop-up shops. They're not running giveaways. And you only have to run a giveaway. And they, you can do something as cheap as run a shelfie contest where, it, like, if you're in store or if you have your products or whatever, you send them out, tell your customers, hey, take a picture holding my product, show me your receipt, and we'll enter you into a cash drawing of $25. People will do that. People will do that because people like to win stuff on the Internet. And I'm just like, we're, we're not going to make excuses. We got to stop the victim mentality stuff and I get that it may be 10 times harder because we're black but we know this so we gotta we just gotta work 10 times harder then what we gonna do we gonna say oh I gotta work 10 times harder I'm gonna cop out no nah, we gonna work 10 times harder we gotta get it done or even if you didn't believe in investing into influencers to pay them to get reviews on your um products you could have been doing something you could have been having events you could have been doing meet and greets you could have been running contests doing giveaways or something to promote your product because that's where the that's where the center of your advertisement is your cop your products are based on social media and i'm sorry y'all keep digging in my eye i have like a hair in my eye and i cannot get it out but even if you don't feel like paying influencers is something that you want to do then don't but you got to figure out another way to build a rapport with your customer and that's that's the, to me that's the beautiful thing about being an influencer we're real people well some of us real but we're real people with real audiences and real money and we're willing to support people that we feel like are supporting us and i feel like with black businesses in the black community black buyers it's, it's really a give and take thing. We're giving you y'all money, but y'all got to give us something in return. And the products ain't just it because there's a million hair care products out here. You got to give us something else that will make us gravitate towards buying your product. Because you can have the best product in the world and somebody else can come on with the same exact formula. They work the same. And the make or break between me buying your product versus buying their product could be just that the, the way that their company makes me feel when I look on their page or when I buy their products. And then there was another thing as far as prices. 
whatever. The main choice in my yellow organic still charging 12, 15, 13, 14, 16, 17, 18, 99 a product and we still buying it. So I that was a, that whole thing where they're selling the same thing we sell it for $5. People still out here buying $20 products. We we buy it if we can afford it. And if you can't afford it, then you buy the $5 stuff. But that's just stop making excuses, y'all. Now what I would love to see, which is probably not going to happen, but I would love to see is these like mega powerhouse black owned companies come together and create something like L'Oreal, Revlon and Procter and Gamble because we don't have anything like that and the reason why I don't even use Shea Moisture's hair products but the reason why I go so hard for Shea Moisture is because that's what he's doing with Sundial. Sundial Hal has three or four small brands under his umbrella and they manufacture for those companies and now those companies as a result have been able to lower their prices and now for example one of the companies that are under Sundial is Nubian Heritage. I remember back when that black from Nubian Heritage was like almost $20. Now it's in Walmart for much cheaper. So something that I would like and I think that would um, help just elevate the community all together would be to create one. I don't even know what they're called. Those big firms like that, that house a whole bunch of companies. But I would love to see like all these big wig natural hair companies that are taking off like Myel Curls and Main Choice and Shea Moisture. See them all come together under one umbrella. Keep their individual brands operating, but have that brand under one big conglomerate company where they're able to pull all their funds together, create a big pool of resources, and they're manufacturing their own company. They're able to bring in other small companies because that's what Revlon does. Revlon owns a whole bunch of different little companies like Criminature and some others, and they all operate independently, and we don't even know that they're really in the same house. So I would love to see something like that. We just got to stop making excuses. Like, I'm so over it. We're aware of all these things that are going on. We're aware of the setbacks. We're aware of the oppression. We're aware of the struggle. Instead of blaming people and saying, this is why I'm struggling, we got to focus on how am I going to get out of the struggle. That period. So that, that's pretty much all I got to say about it. I mean, basically, we got to stop taking this victim mentality and we got to, we got to, we just got to take control of our situation. If you got a setback or you stagnant, you got to sit there, reevaluate to see what you're going to do different to move on. So head down to the comment section. Let me know what you think. And by the way, I know when I talk, it sounds like I'm fussing, but that's just how I talk. Don't feel like I was lecturing or attacking you. No, no hard feelings to anybody. Um, that's just my opinion on this. I really just didn't like how it just disregarded all of these companies who are doing great in stores. And I see all these women. I mean, I've been following them for day one, so I've seen them on YouTube, some of them on YouTube making products, so now they're in stores selling products. That really just was like a slap in the face for that to be circulating right now when we have all these different companies doing all these different things and they're at we're now having hair expos all of these things was not here in 2011 when i went natural so i just felt like it was very important to highlight how far we've come so go ahead sound off in the comments keep it respectful no need to call anybody out their name no need to fight no need to argue keep your opinions you know respectful with each other so thank you guys so much for watching don't forget to like comment and subscribe before you leave bye